great talk. Thank you so much, Zhao. So now we are going to start our panel. So we have some, we're going to start off with questions for Sami and Ethan. And uh, then Renza is going to join us and we are going to hear a little bit from Zhao. So uh, let's see, Sami, Ethan, are you here? Yep. It's... Sure. Hey, <laughs> Sami, talk. Yeah, oh, I see I you. I can see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're talking. <laughs> oh, yes, everybody. Let's look at that. Mm, okay. That DSLR action. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we will start with the icebreaker. And this is for both Sami and Ethan. You both have been involved in the Cyclosh community for a long time now. Very valued members of that community. So how long exactly have you been active and what is your favorite part of being active in that community? What's the thing that you love the most about it? Oh, calculations. Uh, I think uh, my uh, engagement started around uh, the time when Daniel came to to Cloyutre in Helsinki. That's way before the COVID, but I can't exactly now recall. So it's maybe two or three years ago. And then we started working on some uh, the Berlin event, and I met Ethan there and stuff like that. So, so from around that time, um, what's the favorite feature? The people, of course. There's amazing people there, and and you can always get help and yeah, encouragement and everything you need to keep you going. Awesome. And Sami, if we could get you to um, bring your mic just a little bit closer, or bring your gain up, that would be, oh, oh, yeah, I, meditation time. Nice effect. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ethan, your turn to answer. Um, yeah, I, I think I got involved, uh, I don't know, I had I, in two, end of 2019, because it was right before my son was born, uh, which means then that Shortly after it started, I was less involved. <laughs> so I haven't had it up in that. Um, and I think, yeah, I don't know. For me, it's just a really nice group of people. And I think one part of that is the uh, one, oftentimes we talk about uh, not having kind of uh, litmus tests around expertise or sort of level of, e even in terms of level of familiarity with. The things that we talk about so frequently so there's a concerted effort to explain things from the beginning to always be willing to do that and to bring to make you know hopefully that makes it possible for as many people to get involved you know whatever their level of familiarity with data sciences or closure or certainly the things that we specifically have frequently discuss so. And there will be lots of opportunities. We will hear from Daniel Slutsky um, all along this conference of the numerous opportunities there is to get involved with this awesome, awesome group of people. Um, all right, Zhao, are we here? Zhao and Renzo? Hello? Yes, we're both here, I think. Hello. Yeah, here. Can Zhao. you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Yep. Great. I look clear. Hey, Zhao, so I, I have a, like a, you know, a very first question is, should I, should I call you Joao or Santiago? Sorry for this. Usually impression. people call me Santiago. It's easier to pronounce, but you're doing a very good job. <laughs> okay. All right. So, well, you know, I'll go with Santiago just because you, you told cool. me, you told me so. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to use the usual icebreaker question that I, I like to do. Like, is there anything some like uh, surrounding you, some item that you, that's curious item that you want to share with us? Curious item. I have all my bikes here. Oh, as I said, could, you could see them. Oh, nice. See. Yes. So, so this one, store bought, not so exciting. This one I built myself. It's my little baby. Wow. And I unfortunately cannot show you my basement, which is also full of all bike, bicycle paraphernalia. So mm -hmm. when I'm not building, you know, bulgogi type things, I'm usually building bikes for my friends and stuff like that. Okay, but is, so those are like in your living room and do you still use yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I use, okay. so the, the one I built, I just, I'm too anxious to leave this outside of my house, but I do use it all the time. Like it's meant for riding, not for showing on the wall. <laughs> cool, that, that the way it should be, I guess, except for very exceptional bikes. Anyway, um, thanks. So I'll probably um, give the microphone back to Jordan for the first 
uh, question to Sami or Ethan. Okay. And a lot of these um, questions are kind of um, dual Sami and, and Ethan questions. I think there were lots of interest around. Um, clearly, this took this recording took place over the course of several days. Um, can you tell us more about how how you recorded this, how many days it took? Clearly, you're very good at pairing with one another. How long have you been pairing with one another? You know, uh, just share us more about that that process. Yeah, so I can start. We um, the very beginning part, the introduction was made um, around two weeks ago when the first deadline was for the for the uh, conference, and we sent that. Uh, to the conference and we still had all the work to do so we just had the introduction and basically yeah we were doing some mostly asynchronous asynchronous planning of the of the setup also with daniel he was he was very busy with it as well because of the um the workshop and i think the most of the recordings happened uh, this previous weekend so we did um, something on friday some twice on on no i don't forget uh, i don't remember exactly but yeah because we have this situation of of a slight time difference we we have these windows early in the morning and early in the evening so we did a bunch of a uh, bunch of uh, coding and recording and then we met when the other other one was awake again and continued yeah so where where in the world are you and at this, where are you sammy and then where is ethan he can answer I, i'm close to helsinki in finland Northern Europe. I'm near Seattle. Cool, cool. I guess we we did know that. And okay, one more question. Who is responsible for the post-process video editing? I know that can be hard. Did you just say, all right, ready, set, go, OBS? Did somebody have to edit and snip it? And are you just you just rock? Clearly, you just rock with it. I loved that actually improv part of it. That was Sammy. Yeah, yeah. So so I, I did some editing because if we would have showed you the raw version, you wouldn't have been as impressed at our ability of being <laughs> concise and, and and good explainers. But but yeah, yeah, I, I worked a bit on the editing afterwards. I believe there were a lot of ums that were um, nicely removed, <laughs> so we sound more, you know, succinct. But I have to say, um, Ethan is a wonderful explainer. So a few arms away here and there, and it was it was clear. It was a nightmare to try to make anything I said into coherent. But so most of the editing time I had to spend on myself, actually. But I'm very happy we had a very good good communicator here on, on board. Very kind, Sam. Well, we were definitely very impressed. So you did a very good job because that can be, that can be the hardest part of this, this whole, this whole deal. Um, so uh, it's, let's go. It's, it's fun to, to, to do that actually in this format, because, you know, normally in, in talks when you're live, you cannot do it, but now you can sort of play around a little bit with it. So we, we ran with it. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, we got kind of Sammy definitely guided this, but I think we kind of ended at this place where we could be kind of reasonably uh, comfortable as we were just talking things through. Uh, and then kind of there are a few guidelines about, you know, kind of how how to do that so that we could still keep the what we were, you know, recording intact so that it could be cut together well. Uh, so it allowed us to be both, you know, to be kind of comfortable and no normal. Uh, a bit more while we were recording. Yeah, that's and and y'all have been pair coding together for years now through the Cyclos group. So I imagine that really helped in the in the in the process of being comfortable. We had a question in Discord about how did you get so good at pair coding? Well, yeah. I've been doing it as long as y'all have together. Yeah, and that's I think that's yeah that's a good point. I think it's worth emphasizing that that is something I think we maybe we didn't we could have been more explicit that we were sort of trying to showcase that, but. It definitely came out the practice definitely came out of the way we hang out on zoom for cyclos where we're just talking about stuff and trying to work through problems um and being very open uh, about about that uh, so I, yeah i think that was showcased there and it certainly buoyed us when we're 
you know yeah, there's there's been like hours and hours of of study groups that have been done over zoom with uh like half a dozen people doing exactly what me and ethan did did live there so yeah that's that's actually a nice feature i could have chosen that as my favorite thing about the community actually yeah yeah and if you i should we should plug those you know if they're uh if people want to join uh there's two communities that there are two kind of uh threads on the Closure and Zulip uh, ML study and another one that we call Shifu, SCI-FU. And ML study is, there's a lot of wonderful sessions that Daniel runs uh, most frequently that are looking into certain, you know, data science problems and just looking at them. And then Shifu is one that I've been hosting and it is a bit more focused on uh, learning the data ecosystem, the libraries, and with the aim of helping helping people get to the point where they might contribute to them, or at least understand their internals a bit more and how they connect. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, Santiago, are you also involved in this Cyclosh community? Not as much as I would like. Uh, mostly from my my fault. Uh, like I I gave maybe one workshop so far uh, like i gave a workshop in this in this uh, conference and then i have a couple of demos and some explorations with daniel and i also was part when there was you know in the good old days of 2019 the data yeah. science meetup in berlin um i was also around but uh, lately i unfortunately didn't have enough time to just like produce stuff i'm trying to hope that bulgogi can be this entry into forcing me to just be a more active participant um but in general i think both like sami and and daniel usually hear from me and uh and we exchange a couple of ideas from time to time so there are a couple of questions that um you've been already answering uh, joao um in the chat but i um, I, I wanted also to make others aware of, and maybe you can answer them live as well. So one was from Jakub uh, regarding would it make sense to reuse some of the feature computations such as Boolean to NUM uh, from the Cycloge libraries? Um, so this is something when I first saw Sis uh, and uh, Ethan's talk, like in the in the back office. Uh, before the conference, I was like, wow, I mean, I was not aware of all this utility function that exists. And I've been thinking all the time, um, how could you bake in this functionality into Bulgogi? Because at some point you're going to be repeating the same things over again. And it's just another namespace where you're going to have functions like uh, convert milliseconds to something and are extracted an hour from a date um, and so on. And I saw that what they were doing. I was like, yeah, this is exactly it. We don't need to go somewhere else. So I think all of these utilities from tablecloth and all of these other um, functions that already exist, they just fit in very well. Because again, Bulgogi, you saw it, it's just closure. So there's nothing that doesn't interact with this and doesn't interact with the functions. Um, it doesn't use, at least from my personal use case, you don't need this whole data frame abstraction. Uh, but all of the tools that are being created to uh, use the data frame abstraction, like its utilities, they will just go right in um, and they would fit very well. So that's actually another point to say, if these things already exist, then it's very simple to bring a data scientist that works with Python or R or whatever, and tell them the things you want are mapped to these things in Clojure. And I would just need to learn the very simple um, syntax of Clojure to write a new function that you want. Thank you, Joao. Um, Jordan, do you want to ask another question? Sure. Um, and it might be, hopefully y'all can answer this because it's a, um, a little specific, but Holy Jack asked in the Discord that it was kind of out of topic, but he was curious to what you use to zoom in to the code buffer when it appeared as a new on the top rectangle over both Emacs and in the browser with bigger font when rewriting map to emap. So hopefully Sami or Ethan, you, you know, if not, maybe we can get a uh, more specific um, time when, when that occurred. Sami, Ethan. I believe that was more of Sami's magic, but uh, post-processing. Is that right, Sam? 
Yeah, the the nice feature there is is a beauty. I also uh, fell in love with it, but but unfortunately, it's made with uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing tool. So we still have to wait for that to come to Emacs. But but yeah, yeah, it it it's a nice a nice little feature, I think, to be built. Go with the next um, question for Santiago. Um, you mentioned that Python or R is slow compared to Clojure, and I'm interested in why Clojure is faster than Python and R when Python has libraries like NumPy that are baked by C. So I imagine people in my organization country might claim that Clojure is fast with that, and I wonder what you would say in response. Right. So, I mean, to com for completion, R has the same thing, right? We also have lots of libraries that are backed by C or C++ or Fortran. So they, they should also not be seen as slower in comparison to Clojure. When I made that comment in the talk, I'm referring to vanilla Python, vanilla R, which is actually what we have to use when we deploy these things. Uh, so I'm not using NumPy or a NumPy-like thing in production to calculate these features because it's, it's such a small thing. I'm not going to use NumPy to make X minus Y. It's just overkill. Um, and in those scenarios, if you also, on top of this, have all of the power of using all the CPUs at the same time from closure by just saying PMAP, right? Then it's just faster. Of course, sure, maybe some use cases, this is not true. Um, we cannot make like a blank statement, but that's definitely not the like the killer feature for me that a closure is the best way for feature engineering because it's fast. I think it's just because it's simple, it's very well understandable, and it composes very well. Um, but I think someone else also mentioned D type next. So if you want to have as fast or faster than C uh, performance, then closure also has you there. Can I also respond? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's kind of, it's interesting because that D-type next does give some of that uh, performant uh, speed. And that's also the basis for the data sets, uh, TechML data set is, you know, its columns are built on D-type next. Um, I wonder if Bulgogi could also at some point support a data set and that, that Although that might not be important in many cases where you don't, you just don't need that level of performance if there are some instances in which. But, but you can, right? I mean, if you look at Bulgogi without my feature engineering lenses that I gave everyone, mm -hmm. it's a very generic general purpose thing. It's just getting some inputs telling here's some data, here's some functions I want you to run. And it does that. So what the functions okay. are could be you could even be calling an external API to do some word embeddings. Who knows? Yeah. This is up to you. The, what I really wanted to capture is this idea of centralizing these transformations yeah. and having this buffet, right? You can have everything mm -hmm. in there. You can choose whatever you want. So people can easily collaborate because they're collaborating on a single place. Yeah. Um, so yes, of course, like using, um, using data set here could be, it's not my use case, but this is why. You're having this discussion, maybe you look and say, well, this is cool to use tablecloth and other libraries. Yeah. And then you're basically just passing a map through, right? I, I want to make sure. I, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's it, it's kind of interesting because there's a similar, not the same, but similar pattern in the in the, the uh, Cyclos ML library where it's called this like metamorph context. And it, it's, it's a very similar idea where you're, uh, you know, basically this map is being passed through and it collects stuff that is important and useful. Exactly. Uh, I wonder if there's some, you know, cross fertilization that could happen there between those with your tool and that one. It seems like there's some pattern overlap, like, you know, and it might be wrong, but it seemed like there was something. Well, it sounds like we have room to explore stuff, yeah. which is good. Yeah. yeah. So we have a question here from Ray1729 who says, is Encanter now dead? It looks like it's been <laughs> superseded by Tablecloth, FastMath, and the Vega-based visualization libraries. Any Encanter representatives here? <laughs> Good answer. But I, I guess that there hasn't been very much uh, activity on the Encanter front uh, for quite, now I haven't looked at it recently, but, but I think it, it, it has been quite quiet for a long time. 
that is one aspect. Joe, you wanted to comment on that. I was just saying that if if I have the option of using the same type of tools from Clojure, I wouldn't use something that is interfacing with R from Clojure, right? So I, I would like to, I would prefer having either directly using R and just commit to that environment or commit to Clojure. So there's also the talk with Bulgogi, with some of people in my team that maybe we could have functions written in Python because that will be easier for them. And then we have to interface with that. Um, but it sounds like things are working out so well that maybe we don't need to have this connection, right? Because Encounter is nice, but it always felt a bit like the less resource. It's like kind of, oh, we don't have these things in Clojure. So let's make a, a bridge to that world using this uh, library. Okay. So we have, uh, there's another question for Santiago. Um, again, Ray asking uh, why introducing a microservice, why introduce a microservice rather, rather than inlining code? It seems like the network calls will only add overhead. Introducing a microservice instead of inlining code. Yeah. Well, I, why I understand from this question is why are we not doing this inside every function or every model right together with the model where the model exists so this is this was the whole story in the in the talk right if you do this which is what we do today you have to deploy them together and then you have to copy paste this code around or you have to extract the code into a library and manage the library which is fine to some degree this is why i said this is not it's it's not a fix for all use cases so if I'm working by myself and I'm a team of one in a company of not that many people, it doesn't make sense to build Bulgogi. Like you're not collaborating with anyone. You don't have a problem to fix. The problem only happens when you have a certain scale and you realize people are writing the same things over again. And you, you don't have a, a nice or easy way to keep um, the data you get in development to be exactly the same as you have in production. So you have to duplicate these two things. So you're inlining code in two places, right? You have to inline the code in development, inline the code in production. And on top of this, if you get a new colleague that just says, well, I'm more efficient in Python than in R. Okay, that's fine. Everyone does what they want, but then we just need to find a common ground where to collaborate. And to do this, it, you just cannot inline code. And this is why um, Bulgogi needs to become some sort of microservice. It doesn't need to be a microservice, but needs to be extracted, in my opinion. That, that, that makes sense. It really seems like collaboration is the key of, of a lot of y'all working together. Um, we have a question for Sami here from one Tom. Any reason for using the ELIS style indentation when using Clojure? And he adds, the result is less ragged code and you can set the font size bigger too because the horizontal screen screen real estate is less of an issue and it's very helpful for screencasting, he mentions. Yeah, no no specific reason. That's a very good good uh, tip. And uh, next year, wait for that indentation. <laughs> we'll use that. So thanks for the tip, it, it's good. So Renzo, do you have maybe one last question? I think uh, we are getting to the time to wrap it up for yeah. one more break. Yes, we have one last question. I think it was, uh, why did you decide to, I think this is from Pavel before, why did you decide to implement Bulgogi as a Babashka script? Is that specific to your company setup infrastructure or there are other benefits as well? Oh no, it's just, it's very fast to prototype it like this. Okay. It, I didn't, I was thinking, well, I just want to try a couple of ideas, how this can this be implemented instead of making this a full setup, I can just share a script with someone else and say, hey, I run this in the command line, see if this does what you want. So I, I think Babashka just enabled a whole level of prototyping that it kind of existed before, but now it's just at the script level, which uh, closure was missing a bit and you always have for granted in R and Python. So no, I, it will not be Babashka script forever. <laughs> All right. Um, so, 
can I just add a short, since this yes. became also a discussion about post-production panels. So <laughs> I'll just make a little shout out to uh, any Linux users who want to work with a proper uh, video edit NLE. There is something for years and years I was waiting for something, but a couple of years we had uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is not open source, but it's free. So we can do proper video editing on Linux. Thank you. But it doesn't work with a Radeon GPU, FYI. <laughs> yeah, you need to have found that out the hard way. <laughs> Just <laughs> figured to mention you need an NVIDIA for that one, I think. <laughs> True. Jacob had asked for Sammy kind of what he says is the status of the closure data science scene and the roadmap. I do know that we are going to hear a little bit more about that from Daniel at different points during the conference, but if Sami has anything to say on that right now about what they're working on, that would be good to hear. Yeah, I think Daniel is, is an excellent person to, to talk about that. And But, but I, I warn you a bit, every time we ask Daniel, when is it ready? He says, in a month or so, in a couple of months. But yeah, we'll be, we'll be honest, uh, this uh, takes a lot of time, but the, amazing work that has been done uh, now it's it's pretty far already it's pretty mature it's not completely uh, mature for for uh, beginners and stuff like that we have a lot of work to do still but it's it's making amazing strides it's it's exciting that is wonderful and remember everybody to stay tuned daniel slutsky is the person to contact about that and he will be sharing. There's even an extra bonus day of the conference on Sunday where you can dig in and learn more about that. So, uh, so yeah, stay, stay tuned. There's also the website, the Cyclosure website of you or the Zulip. There's also the Zulip. There's lots of ways to find out about this. Once again, I'm going to thank um, Sami, Ethan and Santiago for the wonderful talks and the effort they put into this. And... Mm -hmm.